At Gemporia, we love genuine gemstones. We love their stories, we love their history, we love how each one has something completely unique to offer. I'm delighted to be here at the University of Birmingham, where I'm going to be meeting with an expert geologist who can help unlock their secrets. Dr. Paul Anderson, thank you so much for having us here today at Birmingham University. Okay. Um, so you specialise in geology and the formation of gemstones here as a lecturer. Uh, why do you love gemstones? Well, uh, what, what fascinates me about gemstones, I suppose, is the precision with which they, they form. So if we take an example of a well-known gem like emerald, for example, the faces of this crystal of emerald will always form at a certain angle to each other, it's 60 degrees in this case, and that's due to this really complex interplay of physics and chemistry that take place within the Earth. So it's, in, in my opinion, one of the wonders of nature. How ama it's amazing, isn't it, how they just form perfectly almost every time, it's incredible. Yeah, abso and absolutely. And in the world of geology, I mean, it's such a huge subject, um, where did this passion sort of first begin? When did does ignite within you? Uh, well, it, I suppose it started at a, a very early age with me. Uh, so I grew up in North Wales. And I, I live close to this hill called the Great Orm in North Wales, and there was a limestone quarry there where I used to go to collect fossils. I used to try and get all sorts of different types of shellfish and corals, etc. And I actually set up a little museum in, in my house. Back, wow. back then, uh, much to the <laughs> dismay of my parents. I, I thought they'd sure. be very proud of you having your own museum <laughs> as such a, a child prodigy. <laughs> <laughs> so have you got any um, of those original collections then that you, that you made? I, I, do, I do have some of them actually in here. I've got what I, th oh, I think, wow. you know, thinking back to that time, was my uh, first fossil. Oh wow, like goodness. This one from, from that location in North Wales. I would have lived about 300 to 350 million years ago. It's amazing. I mean, to understand things like this, I guess we have to look at our planet and, and how it's made up. Okay, well, to show you about the structure of the Earth, I've actually got something handy here, oh. this, uh, this orange. It's so, supposed to be my lunch. Okay. If, if you just <laughs> wouldn't mind holding yeah, your hand sure. out. Um, so here, the reason I'm using this orange as a model is because, as we can see, it's got this mm. very thin skin right. around it, which I peeled open. So in our model, of the Earth. This represents what was called the Earth's crust. In fact, the real Earth's crust com comparatively is a lot thinner than this. It oh, only, really? only makes up about 1% of the volume of the Earth. Uh, but it's a very important part of the Earth because it's, well, it's what we're sitting on now right. and it's what makes up everything from the mountain tops to the bottoms of the deepest oceans. Now beneath this crust peel this back, mm. we have this part of the earth which is called the mantle. Right. So the deeper part of the earth. But some of the rocks that we see on the earth actually originate from there. Some of the volcanic rocks we see at the surface. And then in the very centre of the earth we have this part called the core. And it's the, this, this core is very rich in iron. It's the movement of this iron in, in the liquid outer part of the core that's thought to produce the magnetic field that we have ar around the Earth. Wow. So we're going to jump back to the origin of the universe, the, the Big Bang, when, when time itself began. Uh, at, th at this time, a very, a very strange time in the history of the universe, um, temperatures were too intense for any matter to exist initially. After about a second, there were protons, and neutrons, these particles were able to form. Um, then, after a few minutes, protons and neutrons were able to combine to form nuclei. So nu nuclei are the cent central parts of atoms. But to make atoms, we also need electrons. So ele electrons are separate from the nucleus of an atom, but are held to it by their electrical charge. And it was actually 
around 350 to 400,000 years before the conditions in the universe were, were right for this to happen, so for the first electrons to be bound to nuclei to form these atoms, before then the temperatures were too high. Now different kinds of atoms are referred to as elements, but there are actually a very small variety of these in the early universe. These elements mostly consisted of hydrogen and helium, which are the lightest elements. The heavier elements that make up most of you and me, the orange we talked about, or even some of the rocks I have in my office, will form much later, and they tell another violent story. Much like today, stars in the early universe burned by fusing hydrogen atoms to form helium. But when this hydrogen fuel began to run out, stars start, started to fuse heavier elements. So instead of fusing hydrogen, helium was fused together to make heavier and heavier elements. Eventually, this makes the star that's fusing these elements unstable, leading to what we know as a supernova, an explosion of unimaginable proportion, which scatters these newly formed elements across space. It would have been from one of these scatterings of elements that our sun, earth and everything else in our solar system was made, were truly formed of stardust. So Paul, can you tell us about the rarity of gemstones? What makes some gems more rare than others? Well, gemstones, um, like everything else, are made of elements. And elements in the Earth and in the Earth's crust in particular, where, where we find our gemstones, can be very abundant or they can be very rare. So that dictates whether the gemstones that those elements form are going to be common or they're going to be very hard to find. Another reason is the conditions under which the gemstones form. So um, certain gemstones form under geological conditions that are quite common on Earth, whereas others form under very specific conditions that only occur in a few rare places across, mm -hmm. the, across the globe. Like Tanzanite, for example. We'll talk about that a little bit yeah, later on, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But, I mean, for example, if you're walking on the beach and you find a piece of quartz, and that's fairly common to find quartz that looks like this. You know, it's very opaque and it's still fairly pretty, but mm. to find a quartz with this amazing clarity, incredible transparency, that's really, really difficult to find. So is that more to do with the conditions then? Yeah, absolutely. So the, these both form from silicon and oxygen, both, mm -hmm. both silicon dioxide that makes up quartz. Um, in this case, the conditions haven't been perfect to, to grow your nice, transparent, perfectly formed crystal. Um, there may have been some impurities in there as well. Um, right. But here you've got growth under the ideal conditions for forming a nice quartz crystal. So we've got that trans transparency, that, that clarity. It's beautiful. Is that similar with diamonds then as well? So if you had a VVSI graded diamond, for example, compared with a commercial grade diamond, it has to have mm. those perfect conditions to form yeah. with that clarity. It's amazing. Absolutely. I mean, gosh, our CEO Steve always says it's like looking for a needle in a haystack trying to find gems of this quality. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about why some gemstones themselves are more rare than others? For example, tanzanite and diamonds. Um, can you tell us a bit about that? I can show you. to show you the abundance of quartz in the Earth's crust. Okay. So under this microscope here, I've got a number of grains of sand. I've moved seven of them into this one part of the, the plate here. Okay. If you want to take a look. Cool. So okay. these seven grains of sand, they represent everything in the Earth's crust that's not quartz. Okay. So and how do we represent the quartz? Well, if you take one if you, if you were able to get one hmm. piece of glitter wow, okay. from there and add that to that pile of quartz. <gasps> got it, got it, got it, got it. There Thank it you. goes, yeah. So here, oh. our glitter represents quartz and the seven grains of sand that we've got, that represents everything else in the Earth's crust. So it's one in eight parts of the Earth's crust, one eighth 
that represents the quartz, around about 12%. Amazing. So, so what about diamonds? So to show you diamonds, then, again, again, we'll start with our piece of glitter. OK, I'm getting good at this now. Let's, um, got, yeah? OK, well, uh -huh. diamond is rarer than um, quartz, obviously, so okay. we're going to need quite a lot more sand. So if you want to just, well, maybe just pour that on top of the glitter. OK. Wow, yeah, OK, so that's a lot more rare than quartz. Well, actually, Definitely. actually, we need a bit more sand than that. Ooh. So here you go, I've got another one for you. Okay. Oh, I feel like I want to make a sandcastle. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's and a lot of sand. More! And, and another. Okay. <laughs> Yay! Best. We're not done yet. Is that another one? <laughs> Wowzers. So how many is that? That's four beakers of sand. We're done that's a lot. four. Uh, here you go. Here's, a, here's another And another! One. Yay! So that, that is definitely, definitely a lot more rare then, isn't it? Actually, yeah. Th I think we're going to need a bit more. More? A bit more sand. Hang on. Oh. Whoa. Oh my there goodness. You go. All of this. <laughs> so, Are you kidding? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> around 15 litres of sand. So there we go, on top of our little Wow, grain. and the glitter. So yeah, I'm not finding that again. A tiny <laughs> little grain of glitter. That, that oh. one, which is roughly the same size as a grain of sand, which is why we chose it. That's um, incredible. What, what about something even more rare then? What about something like tanzanite? Well, to show you that, we're going to have to go outside. Wow, this is a lot of sand. So to show the rarity of tanzanite in the Earth's crust, we need a lot more sand. Yeah, you, you don't say, it's a lot more than a bucket. So, so let me get this right. For one piece of tanzanite, you'd need to excavate this much earth. Well, actually, it, it would be 10 times this amount of sand we'd need for this demonstration. So this is one tonne of sand. OK. We'd actually need 10 tonnes of sand. Oh, my word. But and then, piece? Well, then it's, it's, not, so it's not one piece. Mm. It'd be all the tanzanite in the world. What do you mean? So I'll show you. OK. So I've brought some tanzanite with me. Okay, so yeah, that, so that nice piece of tanzanite we have there, if that was to represent all of the tanzanite in the Earth's crust. Okay. Um, now, here I've got a piece of glitter. Right. Hang on. Oh, very good. One so piece now, of glitter, yeah. Now, if we were to shrink that tanzanite, so all the tanzanite in the Earth's crust, if we were to shrink that down to the size of a piece of glitter. Oh, my goodness, here, yeah. Then. Well, 10 times this amount of sand, so 10 tonnes of sand, that would represent everything else in Ev the Earth's crust. Everything else in the Earth's crust. Everything that's not tanzanite. Oh my goodness, and that is and all the tanzanite that exists in the world. Yeah, not Gosh. much of it. No wonder it's going to run out, my word. Indeed. Um, so what about something even more rare? What about something, for example, like sarite? Oh, well, for, for sarite, we'd um, have to go somewhere a bit bigger. So if you've not seen Sarite before, this is what it looks like. It's an incredibly beautiful gemstone from Turkey and it changes colour. It's around 10,000 times more rare than a diamond and I've never quite been able to picture that before but here we are. Amazing. Yeah, so if we took all the sand on the surface of this beach mm. and that represented the crust of the earth, then to represent Sarite all we'd need is that one little piece of glitter we had. That represents all the Sarite in the Wow, that's incredible. It really puts it into perspective, doesn't it? Yeah, Thanks indeed. for bringing us to the beach. No problem. Actually, the coast can be a very good place to study geology. Why are your shoes off? Oh, cars, last one in. Buys the ice cream. <laughs>